Welcome to episode 206 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Burrell, what is new with you? Um, Working a lot, and while I'm on the road, I do see some interesting things, which we do talk about, particularly in our banter episodes. But uh, one thing that is just so shocking to me that I've seen that I don't think I've seen much before is an up-badged car that isn't even within the same brand. Oh. (laughs) So normally you put like, an M badge on a non M BMW or an AMG badge on a non AMG Merc. Right. This was a Buick with a Mercedes badge. <laughs> just straight yes. up. They just swapped the whole badge over. I'm a fan. So I was stopped in traffic then. I kind of like, I looked over and I was like, huh, that's weird. I've never seen that Mercedes before. And then I was like, that's because it's a Buick Encore. What? That's an odd one to do it. I've seen a Honda Civic up badged as a Lexus before. That's the wrong brand. I totally agree. Uh, (laughs) But I feel like that at least has a path forward. Yours was what? A Buick to a Mercedes. An American car to a German car. That's an odd path. It vary. Mm. That's why I was so taken aback and just kind of shocked and visibly confused. All right. If you could up badge your car to any other brand the logical or illogical brand both the logical brand would be an audi i would up badge to like an audi s4 or something. volkswagen to audi sure yeah the illogical would be to um maybe like an aston martin okay okay <laughs> Something like that. I what about you? That. Where would you where would you up badge your BRZ to? Um straight to Koenigsegg. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I'd go for the million dollar shot. Sounds like it. Yes. Let's up badge my Volkswagen to a Bagani. I mean, the resale value? Through the roof. This is the Wyra R through the roof. GLI Mark Six Edition thirty. Version one of one. Yeah, huh. One of one. Rare. Oh boy, let's get into some news. All right, let's start with the BMW. A big electric BMW sedan luxury thing that's powerful. Sounds right up your alley. No. All right, let's talk about it. So (laughs) when we were at the Rolex, we saw a version of this car. This is the BMW i7, which is their big sedan, luxury sedan. Mm -hmm. This particular one is an electric vehicle. Okay. It is the i7 M70. That sounds awfully exciting, doesn't it? It's just another BMW. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but uh, before we even talk about any specs or anything, can we just stop and talk about the front end of this car? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what's going on there. It's hideous. Oh, my God. Look at the front of it. It is so goddamn (laughs) ugly. Look at it. It's one of the ugliest cars. BMW just doesn't stop winning with bad-looking cars. They're pretty good at it. They have become the world champion of bad-looking automobiles. All right, let me pose you the question. Will BMW ever get rid of the kidney bean grill? (laughs) No, they're just going to keep making it bigger. Even though it doesn't need a grill, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger till you're driving one large grill. The EVs still have the kidney bean, but they have it in varying odd shapes and sizes and different colors. And it's still huge. It still takes, it is the most amount of grill for a car that needs no grill. Yes. It's just hideous. The eyes are so, like, squinty Look, Oh, my God. Again, BMW, what are you doing? They don't know. Could you imagine Tesla having the kidney bean grill or, like, Lucid or Rivian or, like, any of the EV manufacturers trying to take what is for an internal combustion engine and applying it to your brand just because Cause that's really what they're doing here. It's kind of just because. And it's super ugly because it's yeah. huge too. Yeah. It's, it's not weird. like, like I could kind of make a case for it if they went like with small kidney grills to try to make them 
look kind of like a regular car. But no, they went full on BMW massive grill that just encompasses like the whole front of the car. And the way they have this two tone paint, it makes it worse. Yeah, the the two tone. Uh, I don't know. Doesn't appeal to me. Not at all. I'm sure I just deeply offended a lot of you BMW fans, and I'm really not sorry because it's hideous. Yeah. That they've is built opinionated. A, they've but, built a uh, car for blind people is what they've done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, tell me more about it. Okay. The BMW i7 M70. It is the most powerful electric vehicle that BMW has made. Okay. You get uh, a 650 horsepower. And that's coming from two electric motors. Um, you get peak torque of 811 pound feet. Jeez. Yeah. So that's a lot of torque. Lots of torques. Uh, but that peak torque is only available if you're in the launch control setting or when you're using the, M, the this is the name of the, the function, M Sport Boost function. M Sport Boost. Hmm. All right. Other than that, you get 748 torques, which is still a lot. It's yeah. just not as a lot as the other a lot. That is past plenty by a lot. Oh, yeah. It's way, way past, past oh, yeah. enough that you need. 100%. Uh, they are claiming that this will do 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds. That's quick. It's quick, especially since I did not see any weight figures for this, but I would imagine it weighs about as much as the ti- Titanic. It's very hefty. It looks hefty in the photos, and I imagine it is not light. Not how, light. Not how what this looks like. How big of a battery does it have? A hundred one point seven kilowatt hour. Ooh, ooh, that's big. That's huge. That's very big. That's huge. Okay, huh? And they're claiming it will give you two hundred ninety five miles of range, so not quite three hundred. Okay, but that's a big battery to not get three hundred miles of range. It is, but it's a big car, <laughs> and it's just ugly. Um. That doesn't really hurt the range usually. Interesting. Actually, it does aerodynamically. It can, depending Coefficient on Coefficient of drag. Up. Right. The CD. It do- I will say, it does not look like a CD car. It right, does it not look like the aerodynamic bubble shape that we have come to not really enjoy. So when I was bitching about the fact that all the new bubble-shaped cars look like bubbles, I wasn't wanting someone to make this instead. (laughs) This isn't what I was asking for. (laughs) You can't have your cake and eat it too, okay? Oh, my God. You either get ugly BMW or you get CD car. Coefficient of drag. Nothing. (laughs) No. Yeah, it doesn't look like the shape is abundantly clear that this is all about coefficient of drag, which makes sense as to why the efficiency is what it is, or the range, I should yeah. say, because uh, it's probably not super slippery. I'm sure it is relatively slippery, but it's not designed from the ground up to be as slippery as possible, mm-hmm. which I do like, uh, but I think a happy medium between the two would have probably been better. I don't know. <laughs> huh. Did yeah. they come out with a... Uh, are there any or are the any other stats? Uh, a couple things just to quickly note here. Uh, you do get a brand new driving mode in this car. The mode is called Max Range. Okay. So, so that's a good name for a mode. Guess what that does? I, I can imagine. What, do, what Okay, what do you think Max Range does to the i7M7? More power. Mm-mm. Max Range, not yeah, Max yeah, Power. I know. I know. The, the, the least power, the most range. Sure. It will restrict the car to 56 miles per hour. Hmm. Okay. That's not safe for highways. No. No. Um, you get... Uh, Real quick on that. There's there's a point at which you're driving a car, mm-hmm. and the air resistance becomes Correct. greater than the amount of energy that you're inputting into it, right? The 50... I think it's like 50 to 56 or 7 or something like that, is that sweet middle ground. Yeah. Like where the curve, you're at the top of the curve for efficiency and you're at the top of the curve for speed. Yeah. That's the sweet spot. So That that makes sense, but I would say that's not what you're going to be doing on the highway. No. Um, You, it does kill all climate control. Right. To maximize range. Uh, You get no heated or ventilated seats and no heated steering wheel. Now, you know how you turn max range off? I'm, I'm really curious now because I imagine it's either a launch code sequence or like... So you have multiple options. To turn max range off, not on, but off, 
you either press the gas pedal all the way to the floor. <laughs> I mean, okay. flat to the floor. <laughs> Or you can select the M Sport Boost function with the left shaft shifter paddle. Or you can, this is weird. Or you can turn the window defroster to its highest setting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you get rid of max range. What? What the heck? There's no cancel button on the steering wheel? No. What the heck? Okay. So your cancels are bear your foot <laughs> into the gas or make you got to hold your left paddle shifter and do something there or you just turn your window defroster to full blast. I think we should more often put pedal to the metal as cancel button on more <laughs> cars. How do you cancel cruise control? <laughs> Floor it. <laughs> That I end see well. no problem. <laughs> oh, okay. I can see a lot of brake lights ahead of me. Let me cancel cruise. Yeah. Wah! I see no problem here. Oh, that's a good one. That's a uh, that's some weird engineering, BMW. I'm not gonna lie. That is some odd stuff. It is odd. There is no official price yet, but it is expected to be around the hundred and forty five thousand dollar mark. So about one hundred and fifty grand. That's insane. That is insane. It's ultra luxurious. I won't dispute that. Like. If you can find a picture of the insides, yeah, I'll find one. It's got some very comfortable looking interior. It's a BMW, right? We expect a markup for it. Sure, it's a luxury BMW, but why put an efficiency mode in it if this is a luxury car? They don't really care about the range, to be honest. No. You've put no coefficient of drag into the aerodynamics. I shouldn't say none, but not as much as you could have. Um, you have spiced up the interior so it's not a minimalist Tesla, Tesla that will just be as efficient as possible, mm -hmm. right? There's an upside to that. <clears throat> it It is light. There's nothing there. That's what Tesla's done, yep. uh, which gives you the range. But the, uh, the flip side of it is you don't have the nice luxury. Why put a mode in a luxury car <laughs> like this that turns off your AC and it's like impossible to turn back on? And like, it's so... It's all over the place. This car's all over the place. <laughs> What's I, the goal? I don't know. It you doesn't it doesn't have a coherent path. It's like no. trying to be fancy, trying to be luxury, trying to be efficient, and it it probably does luxury the best, is my guess. It does, because the I seven is very luxurious. I'm not right. gonna dispute that. It's super duper luxurious. But it's not affordable. It has okay range, to be honest. Like, 300 is pretty doable. For most people that are driving this, it's probably fine. But I would imagine that would be if you're driving it in max range all the time. Probably. Which means you're realistically, what, a 220-mile range? 220 to 250, yeah. Something like that. It's not great, but uh, the price, the price, 150 grand? It's got, like, ultra exotic materials inside. 150 grand? I would not spend $100 on this. I, what would... Okay. What is the correct market price for this car, in your opinion? 110. 110 to 115. I don't understand how you can be BMW and actually make these and sell them at the... I don't know how they sell. <laughs> I have no idea how they sell. How? To blind people. I've told you this. It literally has to be. What... There are so many better options out there for EVs. Might not be the luxury, but what the heck? Why not get the Mercedes EQS? Yeah, I think that's cheaper too, right? Yeah, why not get the Lucid? Yeah, why not All get a Rivian? Very luxurious. Why not get a Tesla Model S Plaid? But that's you get not plaid. luxurious though. No, it's not. I agree. <clears throat> but if you want range and efficiency in an EV, like what? you'd save fifty grand. Mm -hmm. A new Model Three, thirty nine grand right now. You could buy three of them almost four of them for this <laughs> what the heck yeah i I've, I've been ragging on this car i'm sure it's quite a good car it's got a lot of trick suspension stuff to keep it handling well and managing its weight but i don't see it if there's anyone out there listening or watching right now you drop a comment let us know what what are your thoughts on the i7 m70 are you are you as offended by its front end as we are? Because the buyer of this car is, I am 
in the BMW ecosystem so far that I can't see past my closed-in walls. Yes. Is the buyer of this car the early adopter of the i8? Maybe. Yeah. And they're looking for a daily driver for their i8? The i8 had its own kind of weird culture about it. This... It did. Does this? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. What a... What a machine. (laughs) What a machine. How nice of you. Yes. (laughs) Let's move on to a different machine, shall we? Sure. Let's move on to a Mercedes. A Mercedes... uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this. Gelandewagen. A G-Wagon. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the German. That's my best German... Jelandewagen, I think that's how sure. you pronounce it. I think somewhere like that. Tell me more. I think I'm wrong. But the 500,000th G Wagon has rolled off the Half line. Half a million? Half a million G Wagons. That's a lot of G Wagons. That's a lot of G Wagons. Wow. Okay. Can you believe there's half a million G Wagons out there? No. Holy moly. That's a lot. Yeah. That's like a lot, a lot of G Wagons. And to celebrate, Mercedes has made its half a millionth. G Wagon, a very special retro one off. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So they've done this retro one off Mercedes G Class. It's a, I, I don't really understand which G Wagon underneath it actually is, whether it's a G550 or G63. I think it's G550 underneath. Uh, but it pays homage to the vintage 1986 280GE. G wagon from back in the day. Two eighty G E. Okay. G E to you, sir. Mm-hmm. General Electric. Mm, Geland something wagon. Yeah. One. Some German word. Yes. Okay. Um, it it looks very retro, doesn't it? Yeah. Like at the first glance, I saw this picture. I was like, "Oh, cool! An old." Wait a minute. Yeah. That's not old. That is new, made to look old. You know, I think that this is going to be more and more of a thing i love this yeah this looks fantastic it is wearing the agave green paint which was one of the first colors available on early g wagons it's got amber turn signals instead of clear it's got uh like an all black front fascia and uh, some more black trim pieces and stuff like that um you get unfortunately w- the article doesn't show pictures of the interior but apparently you get a, a really nice retro inspired interior with some sort of checker pattern and stuff like that um yeah i i love it i, l- I love it i can dig this mm. this is really cool the paint really works on this uh i don't know that i've seen an old one with that specific paint before i have but I think it definitely works with the G class, uh, and this seems more off roady than it is like blingy because it, it's an older one. It is a thousand percent. Yeah, it harks back to what the car originally was. It's got that cool roof rack on it. It's the German Jeep, right? Right. It's it looks like a German Jeep. It That's reminds awesome. me of how Jeep does the Willis edition. Yeah, right. It's a new Jeep to made made to look old, um, but I have bad news. Oh, as I mentioned earlier, it is a one-off. Is it a one one-off? As from what I'm understanding, yes. Oh no. And here's my beef. This should not be a one-off. I adore it. What hmm. do you think? <laughs> from the perspective of a fan of cars, someone going to a car show, no, it should not be a one-off. From the perspective of a <laughs> I think I know where you're going with this. A CEO at Mercedes, this is a disaster to make more of. Why would you ever make more of this? You have to change the assembly lines. Right? This is not worth it at all. Yes. Yeah, this was a show of force of, hey, look at what we can do. It's really cool. It reminds us of the fir- one of the fir- early ones, but uh, look at it. I bet you they took one of the early ones and kind of just tinkered with it to get it to this state, and they didn't like actually assemble it from the ground up as this. I would bet you. Um, this is a new one. Uh, yeah, I would I would assume that they took like the new underbelly of this yeah, car, okay. right? And then just kind of put stuff on the exterior yeah. and made it this. Yeah, that's correct. Right. So they never, they're not actually going to make the assembly line to make these or anything. Correct. Which they, in the situation they're in, no, they're never going to, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, this thing is neat. It's super cool. 
I love it. You get the the leather tire cover. You get the silver five spoke wheels. Ah, this is to me what the G wagon should look like. Yeah. It's yeah. so cool. The current G wagon is a little too blingy for me. It's it's too much flair. It's evolved from take it off road and you live in the German countryside to I live in Beverly Hills. It's a status. And I'm going to go meet my girlfriends for a glass of 9 a.m. Chardonnay. Right. It's not. It can off road. They yeah. still have that ability with it. They still engineer it to be able to off road, but it doesn't give that. St- like it's a status symbol now. It's not a. You don't look at a new G wagon and go, "Oh yeah, they're an off-roading people." Mm-hmm. No, they're, they're. Yeah, correct. But yeah, Different. this is cool piece of news that they did this for their five hundred thousandth G wagon. What will be the millionth? Um. Oh, maybe a better question. Will there be a one millionth? Yes, because they're doing electric G wagons soon. Are they? Yeah. So okay, the millionth G wagon will be an electric version of this. Hmm. In my guess. Yeah. Well, oh. they won off it. It'll be an electric one off. Mm, I would bet you it's actually a nice vehicle. You think so? Yeah. I think that we're going to see more of this. Give it 10 years. Every single manufacturer, all the Germans, Porsche, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, all of them will be trying to make like the one off or the 10 off of the ice version of the R8 that they prototyped for a while but never actually made kind of thing. Okay. And, yeah, these will be coming back more and more. I see where you're going with that. Yeah. And they will be very rare, and they'll sell, and they'll hold value. Yeah. Because you can't buy them anymore. But True. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the one-off retro Mercedes G-Class. Cool. So let's move on to something that's interesting. I want to talk about an MG. An MG. An MG. Okay. A new electric MG. The small vehicle that you can buy in the UK. Europe. Yes, in Europe. You're right. Not necessarily just the UK, but in Europe. Right. Uh, you said so, an electric MG? Yeah. It's called the Cyberster. What a name. <laughs> what? The MG <laughs> Cyberster. And it's supposed to honor uh, in the in the title or the headline here honors its heritage. Oh boy, it's small. That's the only heritage it has. If it's going to honor it, its heritage, it needs to break down and leak oil everywhere. Yeah, that's what MGs did. Yes, and it doesn't need to have scissor doors. That's for goddamn sure if it's going to honor its heritage. What the heck am I looking at? <laughs> You're looking at a Chinese design. Oh my god! Because. You know who MG is owned by now? Oh, no. They're owned by a Chinese state-owned automaker, uh, SAIC. And they I didn't realize this, but MJ's been, MG's been owned by them since 2007. Oh, I didn't know that. I knew they did get bought by a Chinese company, but I didn't realize it's been that long. Okay, it all makes sense now. <laughs> now that you said it was from China, it all makes sense now. Oh? Uh, just look at it. That's all you need to say. It's a small sports car. Oh, man. What does this even look like? It's it's supposed to be uh, just a tad bit larger than a BMW Z4. Okay. What does it remind you of? What other, main, what other car can I explain to the audio listeners does this look like? Oh, ah, where are you going with this? I don't, I don't know. An Alpha? Yeah, an Alpha front. With Lamborghini scissor doors and the back from a uh, new uh, Z, the new Z? I don't know. Like, I... It's just, it's uh, it's the Cyberster. Oh, God. It's a small two-door roadster. It's about yeah. the size of a, a Z4. It does have the top down. It's electric, as yes. noted by the name cyberster what a name can we talk about the name uh, do we have to can we talk about the name cyberster it's chinese it it does they just it, look for like it, the literal <laughs> translation of like <laughs> robot roadster are they trying to sell this in europe yes why i don't know <laughs> i don't, I, I don't I'm know i'm sure there are some hipsters in europe that'll buy it but like 
nobody that has an MG will look at this and go, oh, Heritage, I see it. <laughs> what the heck? I, it's kind of small, like an old MG. There's nothing about it's this. It's got the badge MG. that looks like an old MG. Yeah, I put a Tesla badge on my BRZ. It's a Tesla. Yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> okay. It's got scissor doors like an old MG. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, just no, don't have that. No, it has an EV like an old. No, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, no. nope. I what the heck? It's supposed to go on sale in Europe, uh, summer of uh, next summer, not this summer, but next summer. Are there any stats about it? Does uh, it have range? There's some. There were some leaked Chinese government documents <laughs> that have some stats. <laughs> so this is juicy. We may get arrested soon, uh, but the the leaked Chinese government uh, documents. They they did go in there and reveal that the Cyberster is a bit larger than the Z4, about eight inches longer in total. Okay. So four and four is my guess, something like that. Um, you will get a top speed of 124 miles an hour. We're flying now, baby. What? 124? Wow. I mean, I know EVs aren't known for their top speed, but what? What? That's not a lot. A Corolla does more than that, I'm pretty sure. Everything does more Holy than moly. that. Holy uh, moly. Uh, according to these documents, they will potentially uh, have, uh, let's see, two electric motors with a peak output of 201, from the, 201 horsepower from the front motor and 335 horsepower from the rear. 201? And then 335? also 335. I don't know that those exactly so f- add up, but... No, they don't. Uh... Okay. Uh, it's supposed to weigh about 43, 4,400 pounds. Uh, this is not looking like a home run here. No. Uh, what the heck? Are they, I don't know if you know this, but are they planning on selling this in China? I don't think so. What? That's the only place this is going to sell. <laughs> I can see this selling in China. I can see it selling in China. Because it has scissor doors. Yeah. Yeah. And, they would, and that they would is eat that, up. that is opulence. Yeah, scissor doors. That is status, baby. Right. Uh, it, Look at my Lamborghini. Look at my <laughs> Lamborghini tries to meet a Supra and a Tesla at the same time. It is so ridiculous. I uh, yeah. We've just spent the the past half hour shitting on two cars and one that's not going to be for sale. Yeah, and that was the one we liked. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. This has gone brilliantly well. Yeah, no. Uh, (laughs) Holy moly. This is a weird car. Uh, It would probably sell like hotcakes in China, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. Do the Chinese people want a small, slow, electric, sports car-y, scissory-dory thing? They just want a status symbol. This is this is status or is the smallness not status? Because from my understanding, in China, the bigger the vehicle, the bigger the status. I think if your doors go up instead of out, you mm, win. So that compensates for size of vehicle. Yeah, I think you win. Oh, so, okay, here's a question. What carries more status? This MG Cyberster or the BMW i7 M70 in China? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Because the luxury aspect is class there. And bigness. But I think it depends. I think if you're a businessman, you go for the BMW. If you're the kid <laughs> who wants to drift around in the mountains, this is probably not really doing a very good job drifting. I was going to say, really? You sure you, that's going to do this? <laughs> if you want to be in the car culture, right, this is what you dream of. Now, the problem is the kid that wants to be in the car culture probably doesn't have the money to buy this. I'm not guessing this is not going to be cheap. There's no way this is There's cheap. no price listed, but it's it's. There's no it way it's cheap. Let's be real. <laughs> it's an MG from China uh, with the doors that go up. I think that's the best selling point. You got honestly. scissor doors, baby. I think that's the best selling point. Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is a hot mess. Yeah. Hot mess express here. This is something. I am not a fan of the look of it. I telling you, it's like a Tesla meets a the Supra and a Z and a and, Lamborghini all and at a the same Miata time. All yeah. together, it's an odd combo. It is a very odd combo. But you know, good for them. MG's back, baby. Let's go. Okay, and, and on a positive note. 
And with that, we're going to move on. So thanks so much for watching and listening. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and drop a comment on the video. Let us know which of these past three cards we talked about has been your favorite or least favorite. I know my favorites and least favorites. Uh, if you're <laughs> Not that one. If you're listening on audio, send us those thoughts via social. Facebook is we are auto. Instagram is we are auto underscore. YouTube is we are auto. And our website is we are auto. Dot io. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.